There's the scene here at the High Marsh Stadium on a very warm afternoon. The temperature about 33 degrees, and certainly it's not going to be too comfortable for either set of players this afternoon. At the moment, the teams are being presented to the dignitaries here this afternoon for this Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup. The first in what is hoped will be an annual event. Mount Wellington, today playing in the all red strip. Come here as the champions of New Zealand. They won it last year for the sixth time in their history. And in fact, the only team in uh, New Zealand to have done the double, they did it in 1918, again in 1982. Referee this afternoon there, Don Campbell, who during the off-season was officiating in a tournament in Thailand. City, as we heard, have made one important change during the off-season, and that is they've lost Steve Maxwell. The player coming in wears the number 10 shirt, Paul Wilde, who for most of last season, in fact, was a substitute. The rest of the team, though, is intact. The team that won the Australian Championship. And let's have a look now at the Mount Wellington side. This is a lineup, in fact, that contains five New Zealand internationals, and of course they're led by Ricky Herbert, the player who had a spell at Wolverhampton Wanderers, also with Sydney Olympic, who is their captain this afternoon, and one of their most experienced players. He wears the number six shirt. It's unchanged at the start of this second half, although one wouldn't be surprised if a couple of substitutes are used as this heat starts to take its toll on the players. Way back to Steve Baker. A couple of outstanding reflex saves in that first half. The header there from Neville Flounders goes out of play on the far side. So a throw for Massport Mount Wellington, taken by their skipper Ricky Herbert. A light bound. Off the head there. Sandtrack and then off the head of Flounders. So the first corner goes to Mount Wellington, coming after just 60 seconds. So Mount Wellington, who won the New Zealand Championship last year for the sixth time, finding themselves being held here in the Homar Stadium to a one-all draw. Now Masson, loading that one in. Comes off the knee of McNally. Now Billy Wright. Billy Wright and McNally there grabs it at the second attempt. But the ball was bobbing around there like a bag of tailboard. And it just needed a touch from somebody. But a bit of a let off there for Adelaide City. The header there from Billy Wright goes back. Right burn there pushes that one forward. Billy Wright turns. The shot there smothered and grabbed at the second attempt by Willie McNally. City trying to break quickly. Melder with the cross. No problems there for Steve Baker. Now Riley. Masson. Over the head there of Lightbound. No problems for Alex Tobin. Shilavia, Filani, <laughs> Mullen, Joe Mullen, the goal scorer. Mullen trying the shot, inches wide there from Joe Mullen. All good looking shot that from Joe Mullen. He seemed to hit it on the run with very little back lift. Won that challenge there. So off in his way to goal. Never in the position really to have a clear shot. Just hit that one on the run. That was only inches wide. Steve Baker, the goalkeeper, seemed to be across to cover that. I'm not sure whether he would have got there in time, but he was quite angry with uh, the defenders on that occasion, with the Mount Wellington defenders, for not marking tightly enough. And it seems that uh, 
uh, it's the two defences who are coming under uh, much criticism today. Still, uh, the Adelaide City defence not all that convincing, judging by that earlier incident where they were lucky to get away with it. Now Keith Garland. Light bell on the far side. Stopped there by Tobin. Throw for Mount Wellington. This is Paul Wild. Needs help. Picks out Alex Tobin. Our flounders. Hey, Miskus in trouble. He reacted quickly. But it all breaks down. This is Billy Wright. Still Wright. Got a couple of players in support. Tries a shot on his own. And not really the power there to worry Willie McNally. in there quickly. Now Villani. Charlie Villani. Slide that one through. Player chasing back Nigel Debenham. It was the player who touched it back to his keeper. Well, Johnny Niskus was saying at half-time, Les, about the explosive skills of Charlie Villani, and there was a good example. Very good, the second example this half, and uh, he's, he, he's dead right, of course, because we've seen Charlie Villani uh, explode and uh, turn a match for his side before. We saw how well he played in the second leg of the grand final last season, and he is one of the big hopes of Adelaide City in the second half. Now Riley. Paul Schillebeer. Now Villani. Schillebeer on the run through. Touch back there by Glenn Adams. Good run that though by Paul Schillebeer, the fullback. Started that run from the halfway line. Kept going. Glenn Adams there just gets there before him, touches it back to the keeper. Masson there, misjudging the bounce. Masson. New Zealand born, just 24 years old. That's Paul Schillebeer, takes this throw for Adelaide City. Now Villani. Villani, now Wild. Paul Wild. Alan. Alan chipping that one in. Steve Baker takes that one safely. Steve Baker, who stands at six foot six. Certainly looked very safe in the air this afternoon. Armstrong. Still on Armstrong, the player wearing the number three, the veteran of this. Mount Wellington side this afternoon at 35 years old. She'll be with a throw for Adelaide City. Even at this early stage in the second half, really haven't settled back into their rhythm that we saw at the start of the first half. Interesting in the second half that Mount Wellington Always got a player now on Adrian Sandtrack. And that could be the reason that Adelaide City aren't really looking as good as they did in the first half. They've got a free kick, and now here's Sandtrack. Away this time from his marker. Shilavia. Play that one through for Mullen. And now Mount Wellington can break. This is Billy Wright. Still Wright. Playing that one into space. Riley's the player who's come forward into that space still. Chris Riley. Riley, and denied there by Willie McNally, who scrambles that one round the post for a corner. Chris Riley there, only 22 years old, found the space, got past Flounders. Wrong footed Bugs Bus in this course. And the shot there scrambled around by Willie McNally. Mount Wellington get a corner. Yes, Willie McNally did well to make the save there because he was unsighted as uh, 
the player shot through the legs of Bugs and Iskanis. And uh, fortunately for Adelaide City, the corner uh, becomes fruitless. Still anybody's game here, Mike, this uh, inaugural Champions Cup uh, between New Zealand, the New Zealand champions and the Australian champions. Now Paul Wilde, Vidmar, now Sandtrack. Alex Tobin available on that far side. Here's Tobin with some space. Mullen. The ball's there from Vidmar. So now Ron Armstrong. All the way back to Steve Baker. The game list certainly seems to have slowed down, but I suppose one must make allowances for this heat this afternoon. Yes, one has to. That, that is the case, I'm sure. That's the reason why the game has slowed down. More and more players on the park are playing with their socks down to keep themselves just a touch cooler. But, of course, uh, the heat is uh, equally uh, intense for both of the teams, and that's no excuse for either side uh, to be listless. Uh, both of these teams are winners of their respective pre-season cup competitions at home, and they are uh, uh, su sufficiently fit to last this game. And uh, Adelaide City, on paper, should win it, but they're not doing it at the moment. Now Garland. Away there by Tobin. Off the head there, and Masson. And Neville Flounders tidying up and all the way back to his keeper. So Massport, Mount Wellington. Bob Patterson. The blue shirt, the coach. Mount Wellington, who must be quite happy with his team's performance. Now Niskahas. So Steve Baker. And of course, if this game is tied after 90 minutes, there's no extra time. It's straight out into a penalty kick situation. Something for which the players will be most grateful, I should think, Mike. Uh, they will have uh, had quite enough of the heat by the 90th minute of this match. And it does look as though it might just go to the penalties at this point. And this goes. Adelaide City, very cool at the back. Solon to make a few... Elementary errors, playing the players into trouble, but now they can attack. This is Charlie Villani. Soundtrack. Way there by Masson. Niskahus. Niskahus there, slipping, recovering well. Soundtrack. So the Adelaide City need Adrian Soundtrack to get more involved in this match. Fairness has been closely marked in this second half. Now Armstrong. Riley. This goes. A Sandtrack. Terrible pass there from Sandtrack. Sergio Melfa still battling away in midfield. Vidmar, unable to control it. Ricky Herbert's the player who's come forward. And now Herbert again, with some space. Good measured cross, looking for Billy Wright. Heading that one back infield. Now Wittenveen. Still Dave Wittenveen. Now Wellington now got plenty of players forward. Still Wittenveen, keeping possession. Riley with the shot. Safely taken, though, by Willie McNally. Chris Riley. Such a good striker of the ball. Seeing his powerful shooting a couple of times this afternoon. Testing there, Willie McNally from about 35 yards out. So Zoran Matic, second from the end, looking concerned. Is seen 
the side, lose their momentum. The side now gradually losing control of this match. Now Riley, Armstrong, Riley. Lassen. Now Wittenveen. Armstrong. Giving that one away, and now wild forward, and now Charlie Villani. Faced there by Keith Garland, still Villani. Brought down by Garland, a free kick for Adelaide City. Explosive place there of Charlie Villani. Causing all sorts of problems for Keith Garland. Garland, 33 years old, did well there to keep up with young Charlie Villani. Eventually brings him down right on the edge of the penalty area. So a free kick for Adelaide City. Be taken by Adrian Santrak. Neville Flounders has moved forward. So is Alex Tobin. Plenty of height now for Adelaide City in that penalty area. But it's Chris Riley who gets it clear. Now Flounders, terrible back pass. And Sergio Melta. And Niskehus. Fidmar. Fidmar there, faced by Ricky Herbert. Still Vidmar. Twisting and turning away from Herbert. Looking for the penalty and nothing given. Referee Don Campbell right on the spot. No hesitation there and signaling a goal kick. It really was a good decision because Ricky Herbert there played the ball. Sergio Melta. John Mullen, the only player forward. Battling away there with Debenham. Now Armstrong. Glenn Adams. So 60 minutes now gone of this match. Adelaide City won, Mount Wellington won. Ricky Herbert. And that one in. Right pound. Whitten Veen. This kick in. Away there by Bugs in this curse. And now Paul Wilde. A three on three situation. Charlie Vaughan has made a run on the far side. Wilde comes inside on his own. Tries to pick out Joe Mullen. Mullen there had a rusty shot and hit it wide. Joe Mullen. Score of one goal this afternoon. Getting on the end of that. Really had to rush his shot there. Armstrong was the player. Close contention. Adelaide City have a player injured. Double Flounders. Ron Armstrong going up slowly for Mount Wellington. This is how Ron Armstrong, player injured for Mount Wellington, was injured in this challenge as Joe Mullen came in. Mullen's uh, boot there, catching him on the knee. Brave challenge uh, on Joe Mullen there, Mike, and that's the thing that worried uh, Mullen into making his error by shooting well over the bar and away to the right. And, uh, but uh, again, a confident run by Paul Wilde when he had options uh, both to his left and to his right, and he decided to make an individual run before releasing the ball, seemingly just at the right time. But the uh, Wyatt Wellington defender got in the way of it uh, uh, in the in the nick of time. But uh, the young boy uh, who replaced Steve Maxwell in this in this uh, lineup, which is not an easy task, is showing a lot of confidence still. During that break, the Mount Wellington players taking advantage of getting a very quick drink. And they seem to be feeling the heat now. Vidmar, Santrak, Tobin on that far side. Charge down by Keith Garland. Keith Garland there, cool under pressure. 
such an experienced player. Just playing it all the way back to Steve Baker. Now Niskahus. Unable to keep it in on that far side. So Bugsy Niskahus, captain of Adelaide City. Won't be too happy the way things are going at the moment. So Glenn Adams has been a strong man in defence for Mount Wellington this afternoon. New Zealand under 21 and full international. Garland forward. Right bound. Usually cut out by Tobin. Now Sandtrack. Sandtrack. Searching ball, picking out Vidmar on that far side. Now Vidmar. Three opportunities ahead of him. Paul Wild. Charlie Villani. Vidmar tried it on his own. And it really does seem less at times that this is being played as slow motion soccer. Yes, it is. It's uh, obvious to the heat that's getting to the players. Uh, Vidmar, an explosive youngster as well. Normally you would, he would have got away there at twice the speed that he did. And unfortunately, by the time he did get away, he ran out of options and the keeper was well down to block, block his view. Lassen playing that one forward. Flounders, the player coming across. Neville Flounders not moving too freely at the moment. A couple of uh, heavy knocks this afternoon. Now Masson. I really think it's time for some fresh men in both of these sides. I'm very surprised that it hasn't happened yet. Armstrong with the cross. A light bound, hooking that one back. Shot there, taking a ricochet from Billy Ryan in the way for a corner. Right bound there, hooking that one back in. Billy Wright turning, takes a deflection and away for a corner. Certainly Billy Wright, who's come here with a big reputation. Certainly shown his worth this afternoon. As Ian Masson takes this corner. Glenn Adams coming in on the far post and doing some pushing. Free kick quickly taken. Now Joe Mullen. Paul Wilde, the only player forward for Adelaide City at the moment. And Charlie Villani. Sandtrack. Villani. Intercepted by Ron Armstrong. Riley. Chris Riley, who wears the number two shirt, finding a lot of space this afternoon. This Mount Wellington side. Now doing the job for them that Adrian Sandtrack did for Adelaide City in the first half. Riley again. Now Armstrong. Armstrong again. Debenham, Masson again, Riley, now Wittenveen, rather ambitious, finishing up high and wide. We'll, we'll, be, seeing, we'll be seeing a lot of errors. Uh, this, is a, this was a good move under the circumstances by, uh, by Mount Wellington. An ambitious shot, as you said, uh, from Dave Wittenveen, but... Uh, we'll be seeing a lot more errors come into this game because because of the heat uh, and the exhaustion, the players now not capable of running off the ball as much and as fast as they used to. They're allowing their markers to stay on them. Uh, so a lot of passes will be going astray from now on. And uh, a timely change about to be made for Mount Wellington. And I should think uh, there will be one for Adelaide City as well. Peter Henry is the man. Uh, just warmed up for Mount Wellington. Charlie Villani. Looking that one forward. Looking for Paul Wilde. Wilde bundled down there by Glenn Adams. A free kick for Adelaide City. So 
Peter Henry, the player waiting to come on. Instructions there from coach Bob Patterson. Peter Henry, New Zealand international, made his debut in fact against Australia back in 1983. Bit of a utility player. It's Adelaide City take this free kick. Now Charlie Villani. Melta. Sergio Melta managed eight goals last season. None of them were shooting like that. Short free kick. Didn't quite uh, come off the way that Adelaide City had hoped. Steve Baker. Really hasn't been troubled in this second half by Adelaide City. Put the goal kick. Flounders. Now Wild. Send that one forward. Vidmar on the far side. Still Vidmar. Vidmar across the face of goal. And he had two players available. And he tried the shot from the most difficult of angles. Oriel Vidmar there. Got away from. Ricky Herbert, I hit that one, aiming for the far corner, across the face of goal, two players were unmarked. As Peter Henry now comes on, and the player coming off is Grant Lightbound, the number seven. So Peter Henry comes on, will take up an attacking role. Give him out one into now, three strikers and three in midfield and four across the back. Change from their 4 4 2 formation, but they started this match. Maxiniskas there, caught in the back by Dave Wittenveen. So free kick for Adelaide City. Zoran Matic must be uh, considering bringing somebody on as well. I know that. Uh, Lemmy Vatsilas was uh, warming up earlier and getting some instructions from him, but he must be grappling with the problem of just who to uh, take off. There's nobody who stands out as being uh, perhaps uh, unfit or more exhausted than the others, and what sort of uh, tactical changes that may involve. Now Bugs in Eskahus. the ball away. This is Chris Riley. Adams. Now Armstrong. Masson. Henry getting his first touch since coming on as substitute. Masson again. Now Riley. Trying to play that one in quickly. He had a lot more time than he thought. Now Wittmann. been a bit of the villain of the piece this afternoon missing a couple of clear-cut opportunities in the first half and that chance just a couple of minutes ago the Adelaide City fans not too happy at the moment with his performance now Masson Riley one player less that has impressed with this uh, Mount Wellington side to number two Chris Riley seems to be running things now that's right he's uh is playing the deep-lying midfielder, uh, athletic sort of player, tall and lanky, and uh, not a bad shot on him either from uh, what we've seen. And uh, Vatsilas, Lemmy Vatsilas, the man uh, about to come on. The big question is just who will come off for Adelaide City. All Flounders there penalised for that challenge, so a free kick now for Massport Mount Wellington. Adelaide City now want to make a substitution. And you got Silas. It's a player to come on, a player signed recently from local club Croatia here in Adelaide. And the player going off is Adrian Santrak. Well, it's not an illogical move, Michael. Uh, Santrak is a quality player and a favourite of the fans as you have heard when he was brought off but uh, 
he hasn't ha made much of a contribution in this second half. Perhaps the heat has got to him more than the others, and somebody had to come on because come off because simply fresh uh, men needed to be introduced. I wouldn't be surprised if there was another substitution as well. So Adelaide City have got everybody behind the ball for this free kick. Ricky Herbert, Dave Wittenveen, the two players over the ball. Wittenveen through the wall. Willie McNally there. He's alive to that situation and out quickly as Billy Wright was the player coming in. Paul Schillevier. Salas has put into an attacking midfield role at this stage. Now Billy Wright. Keith Garland playing that one all the way back to his keeper. So Glenn Adams. 30 minutes gone in the second half, Adelaide City 1, Mount Wellington 1. Just 15 minutes left now of this Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup. It's Peter Henry trots forward. Free kick taken, easily cut out though by Paul Schillebeer. Garland. Henry. Flounders was in there quickly. And Glenn Adams. Chance to start something from the back for Massport Mount Wellington. Henry. So Peter Henry. Pulled back there by Paul Wilde. So a free kick again to Mount Wellington. Peter Henry. It's away from. Joe Mullen, the player coming in there was Paul Wilde. And he conceded this free kick. Ricky Herbert. That came off the head of Paul Schillebeer. So a corner now for Massport Mount Wellington. So this corner to be taken by Ian Masson. <laughs> Off the head there, Ricky Herbert. Just inches wide. And in fact, it took a touch from an Adelaide City player. So a corner on the other side. Another very close call for Adelaide City. This one, Michael, under all sorts of pressure now, the Adelaide City defenders. Now Henry. Just above there, the head of Ben Adams. Now Masson. Wellington with plenty of players forward, still Ian Masson. Glenn Adams. Ahead there of Vidmar, then Sergio Melter. Joe Mullen just getting the touch forward. Villani. Villani there, away from Wittenveen. Still Charlie Villani, faced there by Keith Garland. The experience there of Keith Garland just hanging back from that challenge enough. And getting the touch back to his keeper. Glenn Adams. The Adelaide City fans now looking a bit worried about the outcome of this match. And they might be recalling the uh, tussle that was on here on Wednesday night between uh, Adelaide City and Adelaide Hellas, uh, which might well be taking its toll on these Adelaide City players just a few days later. Zaniska has there, letting that clearance go out of play for a goal kick. Of course, Les, it's worth remembering that Mount Wellington themselves were involved in a final on Friday night, which was quite a bruising affair. In fact, uh, well, Patterson, their coach, couldn't name their team till just before the kickoff, because they flew here on Saturday with a few injuries from that Friday night encounter. Final, incidentally, they won by three goals to nil. Yes. 
So in that match and the plus all the travelling, uh, they would have a lot of excuses or explanations for being weary. Although both sides, all their matches they've played this year have always been night matches. None of them have encountered this type of heat. Not that they ever would in New Zealand anyway. Now Niskahus. Sergio Melter. Now Paul Wild. Melter. Melter there caught by the challenge from Debenham. So a free kick for Adelaide City. Niskahus. Now Villani. Bidmar. Melter. Got Tobin free on that far side. Still Sergio Melter. Put it in, but played it much too close to the keeper. No problems there for Steve Baker. Sergio Melter there, not giving his fellow players too much chance of getting on the end of that one. Deep cross from Sergio Melter was tantalising uh, in the sense that uh, that sort of thing does force the error from defenders, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised if uh, the forced error of some sort will decide this game at this stage because it uh, becomes now increasingly difficult for these teams to uh, knit together moves uh, deliberately as they would like them under these conditions, and uh, errors will creep into the de defence more often and that might decide the issue. Vasilis. Way there from Garland. Vasilis looking there for Villani. Now Joe Mullen. Mullen trying the shot. Charged down. There's so many red shirts back there. Now Billy Wright. Away there from Neville Flounders. Still Wright. For a while was the player chasing back. And the challenge was unfair, says referee Don Campbell. Three kicks him out, Wellington. All while the player chasing back. And from that angle, it seemed that he played the ball first. Billy Wright still down, requiring attention. In fact, Coach Bob Patterson's the player out there. The man out there giving the attention. Yes, a man of many talents, Bob Patterson. He, of course, uh, is a man who, incidentally, is very visible whenever... Uh, Australia makes a visit to New Zealand. Here's the incident again. Uh, it was a bit of a late tackle by Paul Wilde, but nothing uh, malicious, I don't think. But Bob Patterson uh, uh, becomes very visible uh, whenever the Socceroos are playing uh, New Zealand or New Zealand is playing anybody at international level because he acts, in fact, as a liaison officer between the team and the press. And I might say that uh, uh, he's a very... Um, uh, friendly and approachable fellow when it comes to uh, when it comes to the press, uh, unlike uh, certainly one of his colleagues that we can recall in New Zealand, the national coach uh, Kevin Fallon. Chris Riley with the free kick. Off the head there are Bugs Innes goes. Now Tobin. Sealers there doing some pushing. Another free kick for Westport Mount Wellington. and start warming up another substitute. They take this free kick from Ricky Herbert. Up ahead there of Billy Wright. No problems for Willie McNally. Some player warming up, Fred Dijon. He's 22 years old, New Zealand born. Former New Zealand Youth International. ball from Adelaide City. They really, at the moment, they seem to have lost their direction completely. Yes, indeed. They, um, the purpose has gone out of their attacking play, certainly up front. Uh, the players are not moving off the ball as well as uh, we've, we've known they can do. I mean, that was uh, one of the uh, uh, linchpins of their play last season, towards the latter part of the season, when they did so well. Because for the type of game that they play, there has to be a lot of movement off the ball. And now that's not happening. And uh, there's absolutely no rhythm in the side. Now Ron Armstrong. 
Riley. Now Masson doing well to keep that one in. Still Masson. Placed there by Sergio Melter. And that came off of Bugs Iniscus. Another corner for Mount Wellington. So Ian Masson take this corner. Ricky Herbert's gone forward. So's Glenn Adams. Billy Wright on the near post. Masson to the far post. The header there from Ricky Herbert just over the top. Well, we remember Ricky Herbert from his days at Sydney Olympics. So dangerous in those situations. Coming forward there. Good forceful header under pressure and just over the top. So Ricky Herbert, who represented New Zealand in the 1982 World Cup finals in Spain. After leaving Sydney Olympic, he joined Tommy Doherty at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Returned to New Zealand last year. And led well, Mount Wellington to the New Zealand League Championship. And here he is again. Coming forward more and more now. Now Henry. And now Paul Wilde. Silas. Find it behind Joe Mullen. Right there, trying to play that one back to Ian Masson. So a throw for Adelaide City. Shilavir. And Charlie Villani. Vidmar. Now Wild. Mullen. Niskahus. Flounders. Final pass again, letting Adelaide City down. Intercepted there by Ricky Herbert. And now a three on three situation. This is Dave Wittenveen. Good challenge though from Bugsy Niskahus. That could have spelt danger for Adelaide City. Niskahus again. Looking for somebody to make a move up front. Nobody moving for Adelaide City. Niskahus there, demonstrating what he wanted. Got the free kick, which was taken short to melt it. Now Vidmar. Still Vidmar. Still Vidmar. Needs help. Melter. There were ten red shirts back. Adelaide City couldn't find a way through. Flounders. Now Niskas. Silas. Tied up by Ricky Herbert. So now Herbert just playing it back. Steve Baker. Too many fans leaving. Well, there's been a good-sized crowd here at the Highmar Stadium this afternoon. Uh, they haven't had really too much to cheer about, not since the 15th minute when Joe Mullen put Adelaide City ahead. The lead, they only held on for six minutes. Now Billy Wright. Still Billy Wright. Not afraid to run at the defence. A bright break now for Peter Henry. Now Ricky Herbert. Wide there from Ricky Herbert. There's some good play leading up in that move from Billy Wright. Been past a couple of defenders. And eventually, Peter Henry lays that one back. And Ricky Herbert really gives this one some hammer. But always going wide. So about two and a half minutes left on our watch. Adelaide City won. Mount Wellington won. And this first Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup heading towards a draw, heading to be decided on penalty kicks. <coughs> Steve Baker. There's not too much to do in this second half, but if it comes to a penalty kick situation. Could be in for a very busy time. 
Saw and Message there, second from the end. Looking a very worried man. Seeing his side dominate so much of the first half. So the player coming on is number eight, Dave Taylor. He's come on. The player that's come off, Nigel Debenham. So Dave Saylor, who's the assistant coach, in fact, at Mount Wellington. Uh, 36 years old. In fact, he's had experience at Sydney, Croatia. Is the player that's come on for the final two minutes. Now Vidmar. Billy Wright. Chris Riley. So it seems that Sport Mount Wellington are quite willing to settle for a draw. They decide this match on penalty kicks. Armstrong. Now Melter. Intercepted there by Dave Taylor. Referee Don Campbell given the free kick. In fact, Eliza was flanging for a free kick. Don Campbell there gives a throw in. So now watch now the 45-minute period is up at the end of the second half. We're now playing stoppage time. The offside flag is up. Three players caught offside. All eyes now on referee Don Campbell. So Bugs in this goes. Charlie Fellani. As the final whistle goes, the first Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup has ended in a 1-1 draw, and this match will now be... This championship will be decided on penalty kicks. The final score on Adelaide City 1, Mount Wellington 1. So the first penalty kick to be taken by Adelaide City by their skipper, Bugsy Niskahus. Steve Baker, the keeper. So Bugsy Niskahus scores, and Adelaide City go one up. First penalty for Mount Wellington to be taken by Ian Masson. So Ian Masson puts that one over the top. And Adelaide City have the advantage. So Sergio Melter. Steve Baker. Melter scores. Adelaide City two up. So Dave Taylor will take the second penalty for Mount Wellington. And William McNally guessed the right way but fails to keep it out. Adelaide City 2, Mount Wellington 1 in the penalty kick situation. Penalty number four for number three for Adelaide City. Beats the keeper. 3-1 now Adelaide City lead on penalties. And what a birthday gift for his team. He keeps that one out. Adelaide City now lead 3-1 after three penalties. So Charlie Villani scores and Adelaide City have won the Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup. Adelaide City scored from their penalties. Mount Wellington missed two out of three. So Adelaide City win 4-1 on penalties after the game was tied 1-1 after 90 minutes. Certainly some drama to end the afternoon here at the High Mars Stadium.
as the fans go out to mob their Adelaide City team, the team who last year became the Australian champions, and their second trophy now within seven days. They won the Ampole Cup on Wednesday night here in Adelaide, beating Adelaide Hellis 2-1, and they've now won the Qantas Pacific Challenge Cup.